Hello, so we've kind of started a new unit here. I don't know if you picked up on that or not, since, you know, our last unit was kind of about the history of the earth. And we did kind of talk about, you know, common ancestors and fossils and long dead organisms. But this unit is shifting focus a little tiny bit. We will be uh, talking about um, essentially evolution and some of the evidence that this has happened. So I know with Tiktaalik and the video we watched on like that first tetrapod that had legs, we talked a lot about this kind of bone structure here. So we had the humerus, which was the first bone, and there was only one of them. Then we had the radius and the ulna, which most of these, you have a little tiny leftover one in the horse there. They don't appear to have two in that picture, but the rest of them have two bones. Then we have our metacarpals, which are a bunch of little tiny bones. And then we have our phalanges. So we have very similar anatomical structure in a lot of different animals. Okay, so you were describing the functions here. Humans use their arms to grab onto things. Horses are support in walking, whales for swimming and shifting their position in the water. Turtles for walking, frogs walking, jumping, and swimming. And birds use it for uh, flying mainly, unless you're like an ocean bird, you might use it to kind of fly slash swim in the water as well. And then are the bones arranged in similar ways in each animal? So the bones are arranged in similar ways. It's got that one, then two, then many bones, then your phalanges kind of structure. Right. So that could be evidence for evolution there. Um, and if it gets into these, yes, it does. These structures are formed in similar ways during embryonic development and share like arrangements. However, they have somewhat different forms and functions. So these are called homologous structures. Um, homologous means similar, like homo is the same. We have the same structure, but they're not quite the same function. Um, there's, I don't know if we'll get to it eventually, but there's another one called analogous structures. This is, uh, some of the best examples of that are like marsupials are mammals, but they're kind of a more primitive or not necessarily primitive, but different branch than ones that uh, we call the placental mammals like us that have give birth to fully developed live young where marsupials give birth to really tiny ones and they crawl into a pouch and then continue developing there um you have an analogous structure in certain animals that uh, fill the same role as a placental animal so they didn't come from the same structure they kind of evolved into the same role um, I guess another one might be wings. If you look at an insect wing, it's very different than a bat wing. It's very different than a bird wing, but they both do the same function. They're just different structures. So it's just pointing that out for us. There's homologous, which come from the same structure, but kind of branch out into different functions. And there's analogous that kind of converge onto the same function, even though they're different structurally. So then we're going to talk a lot about vestigial structures too, and I think that's kind of uh, one of the big focuses of our first quiz that will be coming up eventually. Um, we have gradual changes have occurred that kind of get rid of or reduce or make things smaller because they aren't used anymore. So we have cave fish which actually kind of have an eye spot if you look at them, but they don't really, they can't see, they don't have a fully developed eye. Pull up the fixed picture here.
Right, so since they don't have light, they have no need to detect light. That whole area just kind of fills in. And they don't have any kind of eye anymore. They don't have a pupil. They don't have any working structures because it wouldn't make any sense to spend the energy on developing an eye, maintaining an eye, making the proteins that help you detect light if there is no light to detect. So does the appearance of cave fish suggest they have common ancestors? Yes, it does, because they have the same general body shape, fin structure, all sorts of stuff. Um, the eyes are vestigial structures for the cave fish because they don't need them since they live in complete darkness. So that's the whole key with vestigial structures, is maybe there's a thing on an organism, a living thing, that used to be important, it used to have a function, but now they live in a different habitat, different situation, where that structure no longer would serve any purpose. So over time, those structures kind of go away through natural selection, pretty much. So some of the vestigial structures here on humans, the appendix, although they are kind of finding out that maybe there's a little bit more of a function there than they used to think. Um, but overall, not needed as humans changed their diet. It was most likely the cecum previously, which is an organ found in herbivores that helps digest cellulose in plants. Right. Oh, the coccyx, your tailbone. So we don't really have a tail anymore, um, but tails were for balancing and climbing or jumping around. We didn't need them since we became bipedal and we don't really climb. So the tail kind of gradually disappeared. Uh, muscles that move the ears. So that helps you hear sounds in multiple directions. Um, not needed because we have few predators and we hunt larger game. We had pretty good eyesight. Um, some of these things, like hearing and smell, have been kind of hypothesized that they've kind of gone away as one of our best senses because we had such a close relationship with dogs. Um, the dogs served our purpose for smell and hearing, so we didn't need them as much. That was one of the theories I've heard about for why some of our senses kind of pretty much suck. Uh, muscles that make the hair stand up. Technically, we still have these muscles. Um, they're called erector pili. They give you goosebumps, um, but they puff up and look bigger to predators. We don't need that because we don't have many predators. We don't have anything that really hunts us, that kind of thing. Uh, we also don't really have that much fur or hair to stand up in the first place, so it wouldn't really do much good. Uh, the little toe was for climbing and grasping. We didn't need it because we're bipedal and we don't climb. And then wisdom teeth, uh, molars to grind tough plants. We don't really need them because we have a more refined diet now, more different diet. We don't really eat many tough plants anymore either. Then on to the molecular evidence. So you can look at physical structures, which is kind of one branch of taxonomy, which is figuring out how things are related to one another. So you could count like how many fins and what location they're in, um, the position of gill slits, uh, just different actual traits about fish. To figure out which one's most related to another one. Um, that's one way of figuring out the relatedness of things. Um, but since DNA has been able to be sequenced pretty cheaply and pretty quickly and at all, um, it's usually in the molecular evidence that we use to figure out if things are related to one another or not. So this, we had a bunch of different amino acids. If you remember that from our protein unit, we had like aspergine, threonine, glycine, aspartame, or not, aspergine, there we go, uh, glutamine, all those different 20 amino acids. So if you look at the humans and you compare it to the one above, obviously those two are different in the baboon and the human. Threonine is different, glutamine here, aspergine there. Threonine and serine, alanine and 
Uh, well, one of these is aspartic acid, but I don't remember which symbol. Aspergine, aspartic acid, one of the two. Okay, but they're different. So I counted up the differences there. I got five differences for the baboon. I took uh, five divided by what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 15. So 5 divided by 15 gets me 0.33. If I multiply it by 100, that gets me 33% difference. Uh, chimpanzees and gorillas didn't have any differences, so they're, according to this small chunk of DNA, the same as a human, which obviously they aren't, but in this gene they look, appear to be. And then a lemur had seven differences. 7 divided by 15 got you 47%. Okay, so which species are more similar to humans? We've got the chimps and the gorillas. They were both zero differences, so they were both most similar. Um, in reality, our closest relative that's living, at least, is the chimpanzee. Um, so would have expected to have fewer differences in the chimp than the gorilla, but they both are great apes, which is the closest group of animals in relationship to humans. And then how do you know that the species is the most similar? They have the exact same amino, ac amino acid sequence as humans, therefore they are the most similar to humans. Okay. So, I think the next assignment you're doing is reading a website article that has uh, 10 vestigial structures and you're describing what those are and remember today's thing you did describe this is vestigial structures which are just traits of an animal that used to serve a purpose but don't really have a reason to be around anymore like the eyes in the cave bridge. There's no light to see, so what's the point of spending energy on making and maintaining an eye? Okay, with that, we've got that assignment today. I'll put up an answer key for that on Friday or Monday, so you can take a look at that too. Otherwise, have a great weekend.